Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzo Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about flux and induced EMF of a rotating coil. This will be A2 physics in the electromagnetism topic. It's going to be tough, I'm not going to lie, and it might take you some time to get your head around it. So we'll start off with the following diagram. Okay, so let's say we have a free, this is a 3D diagram right now. There's a North Pole there and a South Pole there. Imagine it, it's two books like it's resting on a table. Yeah, so that's resting on a table. That's my best diagram of it being in 3D. Right, so we are going to put inside it a square coil of wire. So here we go. A square coil of wire inside. Happy with that? Yeah. Can you see it? So it's almost flat. Well, imagine it on the table. Yeah, so the north there, south there, and the, the square is flat in between. Let's draw the field lines. They go out of the north and into the south. From GCSE physics. Yeah, field lines go out of the north and into the south. Happy with this? Now, I'm just going to pick two points on this square coil. This point over here and this point over here. Yeah? Now, let's say if I told you to look at this whole thing. So imagine it was in 3D. Then I told you to look, get in line with it. So if you were to get in line with it, so get your, to have a view of it from side on. So you can see it in 3D. Imagine if I told you to have a view of it from side on. What would you see? Well, you would see the following set up. Well, you'd see the north on one side. So the north on this side corresponds to the north on that side. The south on this bit corresponds to that south over here. And you would see the square coil, just the bits which I highlighted. So just those two bits over here. Happy with that? Okay, so when I'm looking at this problem, I'm going to visualize it in this format. So I'm going to draw some diagrams which look like this. Yeah. And obviously, you might not know what that means, but hopefully we can relate it now to that diagram over there. Okay. So now let's rotate this diagram. So we're going to rotate this coil within the wire. We're going to rotate it now and we're going to look what happens to it. So what happens when we rotate it? We're going to draw some diagrams now. So here we go. Okay, so we have the following diagrams drawn out now. So notice from the start, guys, we drew it as a 3D diagram. Then I looked at it side on. It looks like that. And then finally, we then drew it as it rotates round. So obviously one rotation, there'll be four different orientations. So here, upwards there and obviously all the way, way around so the rotation is what we're going to be talking about right now okay so the question is this in which scenario are we going to get the maximum amount of flux so in which scenario are we going to get the maximum amount of flux which is it in which orientation so in which scenario are we obtaining the maximum flux which scenario is it well hopefully we can remember what flux is we said that previously flux is equal to the number of lines per unit area okay so flux is equal to the number of lines per unit area so in which do we obtain the maximum flux and flux is a number of lines per unit area right in this one over here the first one we're going to have the minimum flux, there's the minimum flux passing through it. Why? Because the field lines are just going over it. So they're parallel. So here I would have the minimum flux. And also here I'd have the minimum flux. But when the coil is perpendicular, think about it, when that coil is perpendicular, so the coil is perpendicular, there'll be loads of lines passing through it. So here I'd have the maximum flux. Okay, so we have the maximum flux. Wonderful. Right, wonderful. So if you're ever given a question in which they show you the, the orientation of a coil within a magnetic field, you can now determine the maximum and minimum flux. Right, so we've discussed that. What about voltage? When do we get the maximum or minimum voltage? So what about the voltage? When am I going to get the maximum or minimum amount of voltage? Do we remember? Well, the key thing with the voltage is I'm going to get the maximum voltage when I'm going to cut through the lines the most. So we're going to get maximum voltage. So we'd get maximum voltage when there is the greatest cutting of field lines. So I'm going to get the maximum voltage when there is the greatest cutting of field lines. Right, so we're looking at the same diagrams again, but we're going to talk about 
when are we going to cut through the most filled line? Notice that we get the maximum voltage when there's the greatest amount of cutting of filled lines. So let's say we've got the four different orientations right now. So in the first one, the best way to visualize it is that imagine this. Yeah, so this is this as being like a lane of grass in a field. So this is going to be, a, let's say, a, a lane of grass. Yeah. And uh, this red thing here, the red part of the coil, that is like a blade. It's like a blade that's going to move. So this is like a blade. The best way of me trying to explain it to you, this bit, let's just change the color of that bit there. It's going to be like a blade. Right. Right now, the blade is going to be moving. Just We're just talking about the end of the blade now. So just look at the end of the blade. The end of the blade is moving in this direction. Okay? Happy with that? So it's going to move in this direction as it goes down. As it gets to the vertical position, the next one, have a look, the blade is going to move in this direction. Okay? So the blade, that part of it will move in this direction. So this part of it will move in this direction. Right, so in which scenario will there be the greatest amount of cutting of these lines? So where could you cut the graph the most? Is it when the blade is in the horizontal position or when the blade is in the vertical position? Right, hopefully we can identify that. In the first diagram, if that blade moves a bit, it will cut the field lines. So yes, there is a maximum amount, max cutting here. Because it's cutting through that field line here. But look at the second orientation. When the coil right now is in the vertical position, if you move it a bit, it won't cut those field lines. It's not cutting those field lines. So here I'd have the minimum cutting. So we get the minimum cutting there. So if I know there's going to be the maximum cutting here, this one will be maximum voltage induced. And therefore over here I'll have the minimum voltage. And then back again it will become maximum voltage. And again it will then become minimum voltage. Happy days? So we know that the voltage behaves in this pattern now. It's a really hard concept. But then we also go back and we look at the flux. So what do we notice about the flux? Well, hang on a minute. We know that although there is maximum voltage here, we are getting minimum flux. There's the least amount of lines passing through it. But we're getting maximum flux here. We're getting minimum flux and then maximum flux again. It's really quite hard, guys, to get your head around because at the start, we have the simple diagram, the simple diagram over here. But look, as you change the rotation of it, yes, the flux is changing, but also the voltage is changing. Make sure you know that when there is minimum flux, we are now getting maximum voltage because there's the maximum amount of lines being cut. And when we're getting minimum voltage, we're getting the maximum flux because there are there is minimum lines being cut. Right, so make sure you get your head around that when there is maximum voltage, there is minimum flux. And when there is minimum voltage, there is maximum flux. It's quite a hard concept to get your head around. Obviously, look carefully at those diagrams. Visualize that blade moving through the grass here. And look, for a small movement there, I'm cutting the most amount of field lines. And obviously, tie that in. All this, this diagram here is related towards the diagram right at the top of putting the square core within the magnetic field. I'm not going to lie to you, this is super hard to get your head around, but watch this video a couple of times to get yourself familiar with it. And that's it for today's session. As you see you next time, make sure you like and subscribe to my videos. Keep me going. Ciao, ciao, goodbye, and keep it real. Bye-bye.